Hello and welcome to the Hearst Board Awards presented by Jim Plus Coffee. I'm your host, Neve Tallon, and I'm delighted to be joined by our MC for the night, Maura Trasat Nigul. I'm proud to stand here to tonight as we have the fourth Hearst Board Awards and our first ever Hearst Board event. I was a girl with an idea. The attention for women's sport was not good enough. We wanted to make real change, a difference for girls and women of the future. What a show we have in store as we relive the moments of 2021 celebrating our outstanding sportswomen and diving into important discussion around women's sport. 2021 was an incredible year. Olympic and Paralympic success, Solheim Cup heroes, All-Ireland champions, Grand National winners and undisputed world champions. Fresh young stars emerge, bursting onto the scene with fearless energy, capturing the hearts of the nation and inspiring future generations. Her sport started off as a basic website and a few social media channels. The past two years, we have become the recognised source for women in sport, a community of over 65,000 people, and we have brought our first Her Sport magazine to print. We're now going to be tonight on national television, and we're just getting started. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you to all that have been with us on this journey. The people that have gotten us to this point, we're really grateful to work with Chim Plus Coffee, Revive Active, Sky, Whoop, Club Force, and TG Cahar, as well as UCD for hosting us tonight. These are organizations who believe in and support women in sport. We really could not do this without you. Welcome to everybody who has joined us this evening, here and at home. Let's kick this off as I introduce Maura Trasen Nigul. Gurumida Mahagi, our father, August Tamila Fatsarov, Gadina, her sports awards, Tama Inter Sosta, Evalib, Agzava and Wordzanta, Agzava a mask, Numra, special to show, a one echti, the shetty a mask, some lane, fichi, fichi, As Neve said, 2021 was an outstanding year for Irish sport, and the achievements of the women who are nominated here tonight and those who have been chosen as winners deserves to be celebrated. And what better way to celebrate than at an occasion like this, as I look out at a lovely studio audience and we welcome the return of normality. The winners of tonight's awards have, of course, all been chosen by you. Now, the strength of an entire team lies in the hands of each of its members. At the same time, the ultimate strength of each member is the team itself. And this is true for any sports team. While it's important to have a good group of very talented individual athletes, it's equally important to have an environment that brings about team sport and that brings about success as a team. These teams have achieved at the highest level success that many would deem impossible. Here are your nominees for Team of the Year, sponsored by Sky. And the winning team of the year is the Meath Lady Footballers. Cohorts all wore left foot and fell the man, pun the me, a one eight the shetty a mark some lane, fichy fichy here, and I'm spoil and fault to offer with one store pun the me and it, Eamon Murray, Anise Edistarcha, Leshen Rodham of Waka. And Neve is going to present Eamon now with his award. Thank you. Ulubas Morvo. Thank you. Now, as we know, <laughs> Meath Ladies Footballers brought about one of the stories of the year last year, and they beat Dublin in an All Ireland senior football final for the first time. What an achievement. It was one of the biggest upsets, Eamon, that women's sport has ever seen. But bring us back to when you were first approached in 2017 to take over this team. You were a bit dubious to do so because women's football wasn't in a great place at the time. No, it was an all-time blow, really. Um, we're, we're, we're only a few points away from Division 4, so 
When I got called, I said, was I fit for this job or would someone else do it better, you know? So the, the, our chairman at the time was Fergal Harney, so he, he insisted I take it. So I said, I'd give it a shot. And uh, <coughs> um, well, the first thing I had to do, then I got a brand new set of management team in from other counties. And I started off from the very beginning and it wasn't easy. I had to beg players to play for us, you know? Mm -hmm. It took months and months of, of begging and phone calls. And <laughs> at the end, I said, just give me two weeks, give me one week, and if you're not happy, walk away, you know? It was tough, yeah. From being slaughtered by Cork by, in the ladies' football in 2015 to regaining your senior status, what can you pinpoint as the turning point for this team? To get, getting every real player I needed and uh, getting a county board and uh, all the clubs and a good management team together and, and a bunch of players that were determined to succeed. And... Uh, we knew how good they were, but uh, we never really discussed winning that Ireland's ranking. We just mm -hmm. approached each game as it came and, and enjoyed that game, you know. Was there any one thing in particular, or was it a combination of getting all the right parts together? Yeah, we, we, good coaches are, are, are everything, like, you know. Like, for all I do, if they're missing much, I just keep them together. But uh, the coach knew all the, the hard work. And when you get a county board completely behind you, you know, and whatever we wanted, we got. So with all that, and I think uh, the end product was a... Uh, a very exciting year, for, not just for us, but for the whole country, really, to watch. So I, I hope they all enjoyed it. Oh, we absolutely did, Eamon. Yeah. And you've been involved with the Mead Ladies team for over 17 years, but what was it you about... say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about this group that made them special? I had watched them, had, uh, had coached them from under 12 up, so I knew how good they were. I knew we had a good team, but two or three young players coming in would change everything, and... There were very talented players that came in, like Aura Lally, say, and the Sarah Walls, and Emma Duggins, and a few more, Mary, Mary Kate Lynch. They added that little extra something that we needed. And just, uh, actually, COVID was very good to us. It's a strange thing to say. Like, and we won the Intermediate Championship. The girls went back on their own. We, we didn't meet them for four months, and they came back in better shape to, than they did winning the All-Ireland Intermediate. So. And do you think it helped Bondi as a team as well to have everyone training individually, but that you had that special bond and that special goal during COVID, even though you were a part, that it strengthened you as individuals? Uh, yeah, it certainly did. And uh, it meant more to the girls when they got back together. You know, that the excitement and getting them all back together. They were, it's, not, it's tough training on your own and in winter nights, but uh, this bunch didn't mind, you know, so that makes our own champions. So all's good. Despite the consistent progression that you were seeing, do you still think it was an overachievement to get to where you did last year? No, I don't think so. We, we had complete confidence in the team that, that, that win on the day, you know, and they talked to any of the players, we were going to win. And you could see it before the game and walk around the pitch, and we were so focused, and the opening players were away from their family and this and that. We weren't, we were just completely focused on our job in hand. And it worked very well, and it, that didn't happen by accident, it happened with, with, with the proper people mm -hmm. involved, you know. Looking back at the build-up to the All-Ireland Final, nobody gave you a chance, and Dublin hadn't been beaten in a championship since 2016. Was that just extra motivation? Were you quietly confident going along, doing your, you're doing your own thing, minding your own business? Were you happy that the focus wasn't on you? Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, as you said, uh, we, we rarely worry about opposition. We just worry about ourselves, and it, if we do that, we'll have our job done, you know? And we only ask for 100% from every player and every day. And we got that on the day, so good times, yeah. Bring us back to the magical scenes on the pitch just after the final whistle blew. Talk us through that moment, what it felt like, and what the days that followed felt like as well. Well, I forget half of it, but... Uh, <laughs> That's all know. right, we'll forgive you for that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, I was magic on the day. The, the crowd were just unbelievable. Like the, the crowd, they gave us such a lift that day, and just get that crowd back in Crow Park, and the fact it was 80,000 there from Mead, but... Uh, they were brilliant. They, young and old at the game were very emotional after them. I remember looking at the clock with, with two and a half minutes left in the clock. And the next thing, my right hand man, Paul, was gr grabbed me. It's over. I, I forgot. I, I missed the last two and a half minutes nearly. Was that <laughs> sort of probably nerves or whatever it was, you know? So, but uh, the clock really adds that excitement for every mm. day of the countdown the clock. So, actually, a magic week after. Of course, a magic week. There's thousands there. And no matter where I go to work now, everybody knows me. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's good or bad, so... But, uh, You're a poster boy now, Eamon. But what you've done for ladies' football has been huge. And 
do you recognise the significance of what you have achieved? And have you gotten feedback from the local clubs or even other counties who've had their own struggles and seeing Mead win, I suppose, gives them an extra boost as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like every county wants to talk now, but uh, like on that weekend, you had Kelly Harrington, uh, Leona McGuire, you had all these, Rachel Blackmore. It was a great weekend for ladies in general, not just us now. It was a, a magic weekend we'll never see again for, for ladies' sport. And uh, like, no matter where you're going now, every club, every county wants to talk to you. And it's an inspiration for every county. If we can do it, anybody can do it, you know. So we, we, it's not all luck or anything far from it, no. And how important is it, do you think, to have the ladies' football finals in Croke Park, to have that support, to have it televised on TG Carr? What has that done for the game? Well, only for it. Like, uh, for TG Carr, what they have done for, 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 for ladies is unbelievable. Like, and, uh, like, just for our family, we're big into the rugby as well, and we watch all the rugby done as well, and, and it's, it's magic for us, and it's just for everyone. No, nobody would know anything about sport, ladies' football, only for TG Carr. The success that you brought about will certainly go down as one of the biggest achievements in history. Now, as you look forward to the season that lies ahead, you won't go unnoticed. You have a target on your back. Great teams, they win once. Better teams, they back it up. How are you fixed for the season ahead? Yeah, we can only do our best. Uh, we'll train hard and get a few new players in. And if we give our best and 100% if it's not enough, so be it. We'll, we had we, a great year last year, but we certainly will do our best, yeah. We're looking forward to it and we'll enjoy every minute of it. And do you have to approach it differently this year yeah. now that you're the reigning champions? Of course, we'll have to tweet a few things. By playing that way next year, won't win all Ireland for us next year. Every other team knows now. Like, uh, we brought a different system completely in the last year and it worked for us. And Mick Dublin had a system, it worked for them for four years. We got a different system in. So maybe some other team might change completely next year and see, we'll see what happens. Well, we look forward to it. Cochorzachus Idish, Eamon, Er Maids, Ta Bansamachagat, August, Edding Radham, Ta Tilsigamagi, and Ta Bulabas. Thank you much. Thanks. <laughs>